Go, greetings. I am Lies, and I use she, her. And I am Scandal, and I use they, them. And let's play a game together! together. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. Okay, no matter how many times I see it, I just picture Muriel having to dodge around all those roots all the time, or just bonking into them, like, period. Like... I mean, I, I could see, honestly, based on everything else with Muriel's attitude, that seems reasonable for him. He just basically went for the the thing that was furthest away, slash, not involved with people. Yep. And then it doesn't matter if he knocks into things, he at least he's alone. Right, the point is to be alone. Doesn't matter if the tree's growing through his roof. With a ragged cloth dipped in warm water, Muriel starts to clean the blood from her mouth. Asra stares into the fire. So I'm trying to wrap my head around the idea that the goat is physical enough to bite. I was right! <laughs> I should not be right about that. She took a chunk out of the goat. All right, I need to know what Lucio's missing. Because it's not she bit it. She took a, a bite chunk. out of it. Yeah, like taking a bite out of, in my experience, is literally a, you are missing a piece Something. of your flesh. Yes. Like, that is how that and, works. And I appreciate his stunned expression right there. Seriously, and the going... So this spiritual goat is now a thing that a wolf can just bite. Ha! Ah. Also, if it's an incorporeal thing and she swallowed, is that a problem? Uh, I mean, based on apparently an honest saying it tasted bad, which wolves can spit things back up. That's oh, yeah, not going to happen. Absolutely. Um, okay, so the other thing I, 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 I have to say, personally, go. I am annoyed because there was nothing to indicate that my theory, which ends up being canon, was even the thing that was being proposed. It's true. There was no mention of, they bit a thing. I don't know what it was. It wasn't like, bit a goat. It was a bad tasting goat. It doesn't matter. You guys have weird critters all over the place. It's also, bit a thing, and now somehow that means it's the goat. The Lucio goat. But we never discussed it. Yeah, we haven't talked about it. At all. I was kind of going, this feels very out of left field. Yeah, that's why I'm like, wait, especially I was with, right? Especially with the paid scene we just did that had nothing to do with this. Yes. And now he's suddenly like, I'm so trying to wrap my head around this. I'm like, you're not thinking about the fact that you just disclosed to your apprentice, not apprentice, love interest that you used to be involved with Muriel, but it was complicated and difficult, and you guys used doublespeak about the wolf to discuss it? Uh-huh. That's fine. I'm just like, Wow! So, the gods saw it enough to bite. Since when were we even talking about that? That sounds like dodging. Of it like, does. it got way too awkward because now I'm having to admit to you, yes! Thanks. I've never really was super interested in you. And then when I finally found Kohai, or whoever they were before, oh my god, love at first sight. That's I it. was just coping. That's all. Afterwards. It was just coping. Bite. Like with Julian. I, before we left, he wasn't physical enough to see. Have you checked the protections on this place? Um, before we left, who's we and left where? And yes, we could, because if we couldn't see him... Kohai, trembling. Who's talking to <laughs> Tre <laughs> Who are we talking about and who are you talking to? And if you are saying we like you and me, or we like the royal we, or we like you and Muriel, did you see the goat before leaving here or all of us? him? Are you just generically asking all of us, including Anana? But then left, Anana. left where? <laughs> Banana. <laughs> I just fuck it. Banana. Banana. <laughs> uh, and so, and so, are you saying was not corporeal enough to see when we left the palace, but then we immediately saw him after that, and you talked about seeing him, and when you said, "Have I seen something or heard something?" If I said I heard something, does it mean the seen thing cannot be seen, and I'm choosing from my reality, or does it mean that it still could have been seen had I chosen that? But for some reason, at some other other point, we someone so, we left somewhere, so, and it couldn't be seen at that point. And how is that relevant? Okay, so one of the things that I find to be profoundly funny is that we have run now into several very obvious cases of um, something that I like to call the writer knows what's going on, but the audience doesn't. Yeah. So. It's one of those things sometimes where, okay, so misdirection can be nice. Like, your character could literally, like, it would be great if your character would react going, are you talking to me? You yes. know, kind of thing. Or your character is confused about who's talking to whom. Right? Or what's, what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is totally fine. But they never do that in this game. Like, the story itself doesn't contain that kind of misdirection. Like, which is Kohai sad. did it one time. Oh! Going, like, like, remember we mentioned it? We were going, like, like, asked for clarification. Oh, shit! That's once. true! But that's once! once. Which what is I'm really... going to say is... There's usually a different feel between reading the author knows their material so well that they don't realize when they're leaving the reader out. Yes. And I'm deliberately leaving you in mystery. There's usually a different feel to that. Yes. All right. Place. Around this place? That's what I was just doing.
being curious as to whether or not the guts could be seen now? No, no, no. It was about the protections. Are the protections still in place? That's, uh, what, that's what the literal last that's part of the sentence... That's what I was doing. Putting, I was doing... Ensuring that the I was, protections were still I in place. I was doing, are the protections still in place? <laughs> You're terrible at I was doing action of, are the protections still in place? <laughs> what is, are the protections still in place? Doesn't Ding. matter, I'm doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, say, I love that though, that fits really well for him. I will not answer what you actually <laughs> said. This doesn't even follow linguistically. That's what I was doing. You know what? You don't even need to think about it. I was doing it. I did it! Get oh. up! <laughs> That's what we were out doing when she took a bite out of the thing we were protecting from, against, about. I guess, even though you didn't know what the fuck it was. Okay, so Muriel also said I didn't even know what it was. Uh-huh. And now Asra is like, the thing you didn't know what was, I that know it's Muriel a goat Muriel never now. described, and Asra goes, goat! No. Can you imagine Muriel going, hang on, goat? What? How did you know it was a goat? And also going... What, why do you say it's a goat? All I saw was dog biting into thing that ran away, streaked away into the woods. That was a white thing that streaked yeah. screaming. <laughs> screaming away. <laughs> ah! Like my beautiful leg. This is so weird. This is such an abstract conversation that doesn't make and sense. And going, going like, how did you extrapolate that that was one, the goat? And two, why didn't he question you? Or like, at least us observe him raising an eyebrow, because he's real quiet sometimes, at you going, the goat. And, and like, you know, and Nana, goat, goat, and Nana, it was just ass tasting. You bit my ass, you stupid fucking All right, nut. Lucio and his not enough ass, and it's now less ass. It is even less ass than before. <laughs> Nom. But Nana. <laughs> I just love perpetually, just Faust doing that, I'm standing up. Basically, I have my, I'm very high, I'm very tall. tall. I do the tall snake and you <laughs> and just, and just Anana. If just, attention isn't on me, it will be. <laughs> and Anana just glaring at her. Stop it. <laughs> just, why? <laughs> why do I know you? Why are you here? You should know. Uh-huh. Right, that's what I was doing. <laughs> nice. Good to know that's what you were doing. Sensed something unwelcome in the woods. Hey! You said we ran across a thing in the woods, not a... Oh, no! I, I s- deliberately sent something and I'm gonna bit it, you know, haphazardly as it ran mm. by. I sensed a disturbance in the force. <laughs> then I went outside to check the protections. When I did that, a thing unrelated ran by and Nana <laughs> bit its ass off. <laughs> it was pretty small ass, though, so there wasn't much to bite. And Nana... <sighs> <laughs> not a pause on tongue trying to please help <laughs> <laughs> get it off <laughs> it's okay we've now discovered that that's why the goat has no tail that is why the goat has no tail because Inanna Inanna took it off. <laughs> Nana done run it off okay so I, I, I hate to okay so we're not really directly making fun of Lucio but we know so little about him very little we really do so I apologize in advance for, for preemptively dunking on a character we really honestly like Everybody keeps talking about one way and then keeps acting like another way, and I don't understand it, and it's pissing me off. <laughs> and it's okay. So, yeah, so we're dunking on someone we know nothing about, which means we have permission to dunk because we don't know what we're contradicting potentially at all. Uh huh. Yeah. Also, I think it's just funnier that way. It is. It is. <laughs> when you don't know what you're teasing and it's fictional and doesn't get affected by it, oh, yeah. it is much funnier. Oh, yeah. Don't so, do that to people. All right. Like, mm. I sense something in the forest. Unwelcome in the woods. Are there, excuse me, Muriel? Uh, <laughs> hi, um, I know you don't like questions and or me talking or being here, but um, just, just for the moment, just for a second, are there any things in the woods that are welcome? <laughs> like? If, if you have said something <clears throat> unwelcome, what is welcome? Like me? Am mm. I welcome? <laughs> I have, did you sense me perhaps coming here with Astra and that's why you went outside to protect against me and then something else showed up as well. And that derailed like, you. I want to know. What in these woods to you would be welcome? That's all. Yes! He casts a suspicious look in my direction. And I apparently do not understand that that means he doesn't want me here, because perplexed. I look right back. I have not figured out yet through the double talk, which is fair. Kohai has never really experienced, I think, Asra doing that level of, like, open double talk like nope. that, I think. That's not what he usually does, no. Like, Asra seems to try to hide literally everything from the, the main character. Additionally, though, I would tend to argue that while Kohai may not connect directly to the conversation of something unwanted in the woods, 
He's made it really clear that he doesn't like Kohai here oh. in other ways. I think they'd be like, yeah, okay, what are you mad at me now about? Yeah, it's not like a, what? I am perplexed to say, oh, you're still mad at me. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. a, I don't connect it to what you just said. I'm just going to freeze and put my hands in my lap, and I'm going to sit and try not to be, try to be less naked. I'm going to gently <laughs> try and pull the back of the clothes <laughs> up over to the front of my legs. I am a sit. Maybe I'll just pull in Nana gently into my lap, <laughs> and then I am clothed. Yeah, but Nana's getting her face washed. Yeah, the rest of her body's not busy. <laughs> Grabs dog butt. <laughs> grab wolf ass stick on the legs. You're all angrier. <laughs> gently scratch your hips. Uh-huh. Scooty, scooty. No, I'm helping. I'm helping her. Oh, oh so that feels good. So her... scooting out the back legs. Who yeah. falls over? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mario. Rage. You broke my dog. And now she has a muddy face. Well, my whole body's muddy. So oh. Also, again, I'm like, this is actually... Okay. Why do I... I don't know how to describe it, but I actually was not expecting a character to actually get either jealous or protective. Right. Or somebody else. And unfortunately, so part of my brain wants to be like, it's more jealousy than protectiveness. But due to the way that, so far, that we've seen for the other outs, it doesn't feel like uh, Nyx Hydra has ever, like, really likes having conflict between their characters, unless it's Lucio. Mm. Like, does that make sense? It's like, I want there to be angst, but not genuine conflict. Yeah, and I'm mm. just like, this would actually be really interesting um, if there's that thing of going, I resent both you and Asra, but I'm shoving it all off on you because I knew Asra for the longer... And and also, but it's Astra, and I love him. And also, I had him first. Also, I had him first. I had him first. And sometimes people... I liked him before he was popular. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him before he became a hot twink, okay? Okay. Jeez. You know, uh, yes. I look right back. Hmm. Did you take all of them? It was Astra, in between. let me try to gently cut the tension with a knife. <laughs> Did you check all of them? <laughs> I will cast the spell, tension cutting knife. <laughs> it hits Muriel in the nose. Okay. <laughs> it, it grates aggressively through the air. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Even the one at the top of the tree. Hi. Are you sure? I'm going to ask if the one that I know you might forget is the one you forgot. I'm I'm glad that they arbitrarily have a weird spell at the top of a tree. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, okay, I understand sometimes stuff like that happens, but sometimes it feels just like an excuse to go, here's a weird thing, ha ha ha, and you forgot. Yes. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes mm-hmm. I have genuinely gotten annoyed where I'm like, I don't know why, but there's some of the way that where it's presented where you go, of course they would miss it. You can't climb up an aspen. You know, kind of thing. And people go, you know, the top of the thing. And I'm like, have you looked at that man? He can't climb that tree, dude. He is the tree. He is the tree. Actually, he just walks up to the tree, pulls the thing down, looks at the top of it, and puts it. He just keeps walking. Reaches up, bends the tree in half. Yep, there it is. (laughs) I got it. Puts it back up. Like, let's it out. (laughs) Pulling! Still there. Uh Uh-huh. Top of the tree. Top of the tree? No. See? That's what I mean. And they only bring it up basically to shit on... I don't like it. Anyway, it's fine. I imagine there's some backstory here where an ass was like, we should also do one way up high. And Mira going, it's not required. And him going, no, I think it really is. Going, why would I need that? You know what? I'll do it anyways. And then being like, that's the one you're going to forget forever. Well, and it's also like, again, he's huge. Mm -hmm. It also depends on your kinds of trees. It also depends on what the wards do. So, like, are we talking, like, if you put it really up high, does it act sort of like a tent falling down? Uh So the higher you put it, the wider the spread of its protection is. Right? I'm like, that could be interesting. But also, again, Muriel doesn't seem to care much. It also makes so birds, you know, do not fly here. It's a no-fly zone. It's a no-fly zone. Yep, because birds are also unwelcome in his personal forest. (laughs) It's mine. (laughs) Asra goes, puts words. All the bugs are just clambering around on the Around outside. the entirety of like a 500 acre forest. Yeah. So that Muriel can be alone. He has to go out of that to hunt. Insane. There is nothing here, just me. Okay, I sense something unwelcome. By that you mean I sensed anything at all. Everything. A leaf fell. I don't even know how this place decomposes because everything's been evicted. <laughs> bugs. <laughs> I would like to eat the dying leaves, please, 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 please. Could let me in. Yeah, actually, I think that's because you'd lose bacteria, you'd lose salt molds. Maybe Your fungus don't... has been evicted. That's it. Maybe the molds and funguses can stay because they're mostly plant. Okay, well then they could, you know, uh, decompose things. But uh-huh. like, and your bacteria can stay because he doesn't notice them. Yeah. Okay. But no bugs. But no bugs. No bugs. Bugs play a huge part. Oh god, yeah. so much poop. <laughs> but there's no poop because nothing. No, and not a poop. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wolf poop. 500 eggs. You know what's the dumbest question my friend has ever asked me before? For her time. So, oh, God. There was this one time where my friend just was looking through some pictures oh and then was just like, you know what? I wonder, do wolves ever look as stupid as dogs do when, when they're pooping? pooping? <laughs> and I was like, first of all, what? And second of all, yes. And then he went and we looked it up and my friend was like, oh, my God. So just, I had yes, this assumption. Just as dumb. I don't know why. I had this assumption you that... Everything goes out of the anus <laughs> in the freeze like a hippopotamus. God, okay, okay. With a tail. <laughs> <flicking>. <laughs> This was a reasonable question. It was, it was dumb fine, but it was, it was reasonable. Okay, so let me let me show you the process real quick. Because Inanna will be awkward when she poops too. So, so this is relevant to the game. <laughs> Muriel walking around in the forest, dark, imposing shadow, dog awkwardly squatting, wolf. walking the squat rock. The wolf between the squatting walk. Especially with the long legs for some of them and the big fleece. They're really just like... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I couldn't die. <laughs> so basically, what happened was, ah! is I was out driving and I saw it's another psychological humor. It always <laughs> gets me. And I saw once again, as I've seen many, many times in my life, another like intensely bred, as in a very designer breed that's been going on for a long time. Dog struggling incredibly <laughs> to actually, you know, relieve itself, and the person standing there waiting like, for its uh, awkward hip. Posture, sco scooting, and and tail moving and stuff. If you've never seen a dog poop, I'm sorry. This was maybe <laughs> completely foreign to you. But anyway, and so I was just like, I was assuming that some of the level of difficulty and challenge and awkwardness of posture might be to the ex due to the excessive amount of breeding of the dog. And so I was like, okay, let's say natural dogs, i.e., <laughs> wolves, and completely unmessed with wolves. Do they have a better, more comfortable, less awkward pooping experience? And apparently the answer is no. No. The answer is all dogs squat awkwardly and you cannot win. The thing is, is okay, so I've never seen a corgi poop. <laughs> I've always been curious because their butt is so round. So I'm like, do you just poop yourself a lot? I don't even know. That I've is never... the one I've thought because they I... also have such short little legs. It's like, how do you squat? You're already you squat? on the ground. Yeah, exactly. How do wiener dogs? <laughs> Uh, um, Speaking of no, no, Muriel, <laughs> be done. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about no, no. <laughs> no. Well, let's go check on it. <sighs> Kohai, are you wound up? I just said, Kohai, I still naked. I'm I'm still <laughs> half naked. Okay, but like, Astra, listening to the out of game conversation, Muriel shutting <laughs> it down. Well, <laughs> let's go check on it. Like, hi! Are you wound up? <laughs> Come! <laughs> Let me redirect immediately! Yes. Mm. When I talked about cutting the tension with a knife, I did not mean redirect to this! Ah! <laughs> I don't care if you're more comfortable. Stop it. Astra takes my hands uh, with both of his on the pretense of checking my temperature. And Muriel watches intently. I am still sitting on the dirt floor next to the dog. And I am literally only wearing his coat and his scarf, which basically covers my shoulders, most of my <clears throat> ass, and my chest, mostly. Not the cleavage, but like maybe the important parts. Important. The ones that would make it a mature photo? <laughs> yes. Also, I'm going, hang on, pretense of checking my temperature. He only touches me to see if I am warm or not. Or, again, pretense of doing that. No, I support them. Stop it, Muriel. Like, that's what I got. Especially mm -hmm. with Muriel. Muriel watches intently. Yes, I'm going to show you. Actually, yes, my attention is here. There's something you can do about it. Uh -huh. I guess some of that, too. Yeah. Put uh. the fire out. It's hot. I am not warm yet, but okay. I'll put yeah, that immediately. I feel, I feel like that's, that's impossible. Like... I suppose it's being disingenuous because we don't know how exactly Astra said that, but based on everything else Astra's done, it just reads as being kind of mean and Muriel being frustrated and I say the fact that he's immediately and grumpy and blushing <coughs> would suggest that he's feeling very awkward about the experience of Astra checking on you and sort of doting on you uh -huh. and him going, you know what, I'm going to tell you. Just like I said, no, my dog is mean, I'm going to say, no, it's hot. Yeah, stop it. I'm going to contradict the entire statement about reality. Have you warmed up yet? It's freaking hot. Period. Just stop it. Yeah. Yes. 
I feel really bad for him actually right now. He yeah, okay, that would suck. Like yeah. As far as I understand Astro's behavior. Like, I feel bad even for Julian. I'm like, yeah. holy shit, that whole playthrough where we went through it, like, on his route, I'm like, dude, you were wronged. You were such a mess for many, many reasons. It also makes it interestingly more ironic to um, have the extrapolation that we had during Julian's route, which was that the apprentice reminds him of Astra, and that is why he's immediately drawn to them. Because yes. they have a lot of Astra's mannerisms and such, the way, you know, you take after the person you've seen most. Yes. Yes, and probably some of his intonations of speech and things. Oh even God, though that would, it would be such an interesting dark story, but I'm also just like, yes. it's just it's so not it, here. I would say if you need angsty dark stories, Ben, have we got some head cannons for you? Congratulations, oh, they're say, all on YouTube for free. Uh, yes. Unless you'd like to go check out our Kofi page, <laughs> you can pay us or get it for free. Either way. <laughs> but if you get it for free, it still gives back to us because YouTube says, "Oh, hey, look, more people are interested." <coughs> all right. Pretty much. <coughs> he. Judges passed us to go outside. Reluctantly, Astra releases my hand. The fire did not get put out. Okay. Together, still without putting the fire, the fire yep. we follow Muriel's brooding back out the door and into the light's drizzling day. I have no pants or shoes or <laughs> undergarments on of any kind. <laughs> my clothes are hanging up. <laughs> In Muriel's hut, and as offended as he is with my very presence, I feel like I should take them with me, <laughs> so that they Ooh. won't be there when we get back. Are we coming back? That's right, I need to know. As a please. I'm not used to being like, you know, growing to the wind. <laughs> I, I imagine there's some level of, you, you, you probably put clothes back on. But again, they it's haven't never mentioned it. been so... mentioned. It was mentioned that we got undressed, but not that we've gotten dressed. Nope. Only that we specifically are wearing his scarf and his coat. Yes, which is still frustrating. Mm -hmm. I really wish... And that... you know what? In the same way that Follow we... Follow through with the points you set down. The same way that we stuck with the details in Julian's route, we We're should just stick with this. Right are now... Are we going to just be naked for the rest of the playthrough? I mean, eventually we'll have to have the ball, so we'll get dressed then. Oh, come on. If he ever puts his coat back on, we'll be full naked. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know it, but Kohai <coughs> is going to tolerate anything Astra puts them through, uh -huh. including nudity in public. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's an abusive length that I would not have expected. Well, I mean, or maybe it's not abusive. We don't know the taboos of nudity or not. We just know that people oh, generally wear clothes. Maybe it's awkward. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just different than we're used to. Right. And going... I will now try this new thing. Mm. Naked. Does, does Astra think I'm cute <laughs> no when I'm naked? I suppose Ocran sensibilities don't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> I see that the poverty has really hit us quite deeply. Um, clothes are now optional. <clears throat> Please, get that child some clothes. <laughs> if, you know what? I love doting on my, um, my staff and, and my assistants. And you know what? Let me dress you. If Portia does it first. Allow me to, to, to <coughs> clothe you as, as a gift. It'll Portia. Be a gift. Oh my god, I heard that somebody was suffering alone from not having clothes and I'm here! I'm here! Throws a blanket over you. I've got you! <laughs> Scoots you off to a wardrobe. We will dress you. We will dress you. I've got you. You know, I need to um, ask you questions about the snake. And <laughs> into the drizzling day. That you never answered. I will never answer. Maybe be cold without any pants or shoes on. <laughs> a little light makes it through the canopy when it's misty like this the trees are like islands in the fog oh that's a really pretty image that actually. is a very pretty image also though <clears throat> islands in the fog feels very much like crowns so i'm thinking the trunks are islands in the fog that's a dense fucking fog mm -hmm. that's why i was like that's really much pretty. at all that's very pretty muriel walks a couple paces ahead of astra and me also looking like an island in the fog because he's <clears> a tree checking enchanted spots i assume along our secretive meandering route though so how do i know it's a secret and meandering because secretive so probably possibly kohai's like there's some skulking going along so going it has to be secret so he's being secretive yes. and so i assume we all are and i, <clears throat> I assume the route itself is mm -hmm. yeah i'm making some assumptions here but it's okay a meandering route each stop has something to gather asra idly collects the berries greens herbs and mushrooms you know what i did I put protections slash wards, aggressive, strong wards at every point where there was good foraging. That way nothing would ever bother you and you would remember to eat. 
Actually, that's not a bad idea. That's actually very thoughtful. Going <coughs> or going, I put the ward in and then I grew, then I planted things that basically would start to grow in response to possibly the magic offshoot. Area. And also the fact that nothing's going to be there. Uh -huh. And going, I have made it so that my friend can easily eat because there will never be anyone here ever to make him skittish off. Mm -hmm. All right. I know that wasn't good grammar, but I said it anyways. Yeah, no, I know. All right. <coughs> Sometimes <clears throat> you just gotta fucking say it. Sometimes words. You haven't picked any of these? I would love orange butch bullets. Hmm. Bolletes? 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 Orange birch bolletes. Perhaps. I can't cook them. I can't. Muriel stalks a little further in front of us. I have learned that he also likes Asper's cooking. I should definitely learn that. So that I will not be stuck in his position. Asra falls into step beside oh, me. Oh, bolites. Bolites? Bolites. Orn bolites. It's a type of fucking mushroom. Well, we know it's a type of mushroom. I did. But I didn't, I didn't know it was it. a type of... It's bolite. Bolite. Yeah, I remember that because we went to... Or it was just me, wasn't it? I went to the mushroom gathering um, thing at the library, remember? Oh, yeah, I didn't <clears> know. Yeah, they're bolites. Okay. My apologies. That's it. That, mm. I was like, that sounds familiar, but I don't... Asra falls into step beside me. And speaks in a voice so low, I can hardly hear. I never told you what was this, did I? My childhood circumstances? Mine and his. Asra, he's never told me about anything. <laughs> Just so you know. And so, no, no, you have not. I'm listening. I'm all ears. Holy shit, you're telling me things. You... I am vibrating Let with me attention. Be deeply quiet and give you full eye contact. It was hard. Nights where there was no else safe to rest and everything we could not to sleep. I mean, this place out here to stay changed the whole world for us. His dreamy, distant look. Oh, that's good to know him. <laughs> he is haunting in the fog. I wonder if this expression has been with him since then. I, forever and ever, could be. Also him going, I have better memories of this than Muriel. Muriel, it was death time. It was made of sock. We were fighting for our lives. Ezra, no, it wasn't too bad. Like, we worked too hard to stay awake, but then a haven of this ramble-down shack full of water and <clears throat> mud. Probably also great. salamanders. Because um, of that much water. So, they're actually, so not all, not all... Uh, no, like... we warded them away. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's such a babies. nice, moist forest. They would love it there. You would oh, have so many good fuck. animals that... No. No. <laughs> no praying mantises for you. No. <laughs> Uh, since then, uh, good thing you got away. Good thing you had each other. I, you don't get away from your childhood. So even if I would say something like that, I would never say that. So probably a good thing you had each other. Yes. Okay. A good <coughs> thing you had each other, because you grow up. You don't get away from your childhood. Oh, good thing you got away from being young. How did you do that? <laughs> how how did I? Say, um, uh, I hate children. Good thing I never was one. I got away from my childhood, and in five easy steps, and in ten payments of twenty nine ninety nine, you too can. It's like the trench bowl. Remember uh -huh. where she goes off about it? I think Hook does it too. Um, there's there are several fictional adults. I that like, like I never was adults. one. Yes, like, I do that. That are like I wasn't a child. What's wrong with you? Why could you? Why, why <laughs> can't you, you do it? Why aren't you skipping it like a good decent human being? Uh -huh. Decent human beings Decent. don't spend time in childhood. All right, so five seconds of, of, of small thing mentioning Trunchbull. I know there's going to be a Matilda, apparently... Remake. Uh, musical remake. Yes. So it is going to be a musical, and I'm very deeply disappointed because apparently they're casting a thin actress who I like. Mm. Um, as Emma Thompson? The, Emma, Tom, right? Emma Thompson. Yes? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one who played uh, uh, Tr Sybil Trelawney. Mm. She's the only, that's the only character I can think of right now. Or the narrator in, um... In, um, uh, Stranger Than Fiction. The slash, slash the author. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I really like that actress, and I'm like, and they put her in a fucking fat suit, and I'm so disappointed. They could have just gotten a, a big, a large woman, again, much like the original actress, to play that role. Yeah. And there, there's this wonderful, uh, there's a, a couple of YouTubers that we follow, but one of them is very lovely and speaks in great depth on casting people of different sizes, and especially fat people for fat roles, and going, you have a lot of fat actors out there that are looking for jobs and are very skilled at their crafts. 
And if you put thin actors or actresses in fat suits, one, it's disingenuous to the way people actually look and their bodies present, uh -huh. but two, it denies those people jobs. Yes. And I get that they want a big name person because you always want names to draw on the crowd, but I would watch Matilda if it was made with nothing but unknowns. Yeah, well, I mean, Matilda. that was what happened before. Matilda is a cult movie that you fucking love. I would watch it no matter what. I went and watched the recreation of the cake scene when they did it, when the actors did it as adults. And if you haven't seen that, it's amazing. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. So, uh, good thing you had each other. Yeah. It is a good thing. It was definitely harder for both of us alone. Had you been in there so you know that and have a contrast? Probably, I'm guessing, alone before they met each other. They might have met each other as kids, but I think maybe they were... Orphans before that, separately, and then orphans together? I guess, yeah. No one makes it on their own. Kohai, everybody needs some mother. N no. No, actually. No, you don't need a person. What you might need is a community. Is support. And especially is a community. Because communities have the support, typically, that people are looking for. Because an individual person cannot meet all of your needs. I just say, <clears throat> what you need <clears throat> is lack of capitalism. <laughs> Go into space, y'all! Hey! <laughs> and if you don't know that reference, you need to hang out with us on Twitch because yeah. it is there it's and we true. would love to have you. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, so somebody. everybody needs somebody. Um, Which I disagree with, but romance games, that is the very pretense of them, is that you are incomplete until you have someone. And this one seems to be stronger that way. And Nadia's route was absolutely 100% that way. And so, Which was very fucking frustrating. That is. It was like, let's be partners. You know what? Let's be incredibly codependent. What? It's also like... I am a powerful bastion of independence, a capable woman who is not complete until I found you. And you complete me. And I am not complete without a partner because I am one half of a set. Disappointed. I st sorry? That was so fucking... I feel like that was that was poorly done for her character. As I, I do not believe... <clears throat> I wanted better for her. That people... <laughs> you just want good things for Nadia. And who wouldn't? Honestly? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, everybody needs somebody. We disagree. And then on that quality note... Yes, uh, we will be seeing you in the next one. So thank you for joining us, everybody. Yep. We appreciate having you around. Like I said, uh, please feel free to continue to support us in the ways that you have. It's been super awesome by yes. liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing the videos. It has done a lot for us. Yes. We're over 700 subscribers, and it's really cool right now. It's wild. It's super neat. Um, and also, thank you very much again to uh, everybody who does comment anyway. It's mm -hmm. really nice to hear your thoughts. Please have a good one. And also, if you'd like to support us more directly, uh, please feel free to go check out Ko-Fi, Patreon, or the Twitch. There yep. are links in the description. We'd love to see you there. And I have been Scandal. And I, I have been Lies. <laughs> and, and it was great playing, playing with, with you. you. Bye! Bye.